Good afternoon, everybody. I am here with Sarah Barth, a physical therapist and a clinical director for our Fun Fitness program. Sarah, how's it going? Hi, I'm going. I'm, I'm good. It's going really well. How are you? Uh, I'm good. If you can, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you became a clinical director and, you know, background of how you became a physical therapist. Sure. So let's see. I, I became a physical therapist two years ago. I went to the University of Utah, go Utes. And um, I, you know, I always wanted to help people. I knew I always wanted to do health care and physical therapy sort of provides an opportunity for a clinician to interact with somebody one on one for more than just a few minutes and to really get to know people on a more personal basis and help them with their quality of life. So for example, with all the special athletes, they pick their events and they pick their stuff knowing that this will improve their quality of life. It's something they love. It's something they're passionate about. And I get to do that every day in my job, helping people get back to those things that they love, those things that they're passionate about, those things that they like to work hard on. So I like, I became a physical therapist to help people get that, that passion back and their quality of life back. Um, and I kind of got involved with Special Olympics when I was in physical therapy school. We got to volunteer for Fun Fitness a couple of years in Utah, and I had the best time. Those athletes are amazing. They're amazing, and they show you just exactly how, you know, hard work pays off. So I really liked being involved with that, and when my husband and I moved to Nevada, it was probably one of the first things I tried to reach out and get involved with because I wanted that community and that special base here my new home. Can you tell us a little bit about your training session to be oh, sure. a clinical director? Sure. So they took us down, they flew us down to Arizona. We were in Phoenix for a couple of days over a weekend and we, we got to, there was a group of five or six of us that were all being trained from around the country and one from Canada. And we got to sit in a conference with all the different components of healthy athletes, learning about each of those. Cause each one of those has that really cool component and it kind of, it's neat how it comes together is this whole global, uh, you know, fitness. It's not just one piece. They're involving doctors, they're involving dentists, they're involving eyes and ears and, you know, all these things that make us who we are. So it was cool to get to be involved with everybody and see, you know, the different components there. And then we separated off and we kind of learned the different pieces. So we learned how to test people. We learned how to, you know, document that kind of stuff and make sure that we were appropriately you know, assisting people here. And then on our last couple days, we ran the Arizona summer, summer games and it was really fun. So we got to have all of our Arizona athletes come through and we got to kind of put everything that we learned over the weekend into, you know, into practice for the weekend. And we saw these athletes event and we had, or perform and do their events. And we had hundreds of people come through. It was an amazing experience. And so you kind of just got to, you know, remind yourself of why you were testing and what you were testing and all the things you learned over the weekend. So it was kind of a crash course and everything you needed to know. We got booklets and then we, we put it to work that weekend at the summer games and it was, it was really cool. So, you know, one of the, one of the main questions I ask, you know, uh, a potential clinical director, um, you know, to try to recruit them is how, how much of um, learning about, individual individuals with disabilities um plays a role in your in your schooling and wow. um, and so when you were going to school did was this what were you privy to that before working with uh special olympics athletes or was was the training that you learned all the training that you learned through the healthy athletes with intellectual disabilities so the University of Utah, actually, their physical therapy school does a really good job with sort of introducing you to multiple different um, groups of people. So mm -hmm. I was privy to it a little bit. Um, I had also kind of reached out in that area on my own. So some of my personal past, like I, I volunteered for, you know, camps and things like that all mm -hmm. through my undergraduate degree. But physical therapy school kind of gave you a lot of 
the more professional side of things like this is how you interact you treat everybody this you know with that same respect with that same you know mm -hmm. professionalism and we got a little bit of time to interact with people with different abilities because i had we have clinical rotations and one of mine was like a, a pediatric clinic where i worked a lot with people that had cerebral palsy or down syndrome or things like that but um it really i mean i think what brought it together with special olympics was you know, the, the athletes, they get to advocate for them, themselves, you know, they get to kind of be their own person. A lot of the time through my schooling and through my internships, they have a guardian, they have a buddy, they have somebody that's there to help them. But the coolest part I think about Special Olympics and fun fitness and healthy athletes is that they are their own advocates. They get to be in charge of their care. They get to be in charge of all that stuff. So I think I think I had the basis of it from physical therapy school, but I think it kind of, it became more rounded when I became involved with Special Olympics because it, it put, you know, an individual in charge of their own care, in charge of their own, you know, program, rather than having them sort of in charge, but also making sure their parents know what's going on and making sure whoever their guardian is or whoever it is, it's not just that one person in charge of their stuff. So I think healthy athletes really helped me, you know, realize the fact that these people are totally able to manage, you know, their own programs and their own selves. And I need to provide them the ability to do that or the opportunity to do that. What is the importance of flexibility and balance? Why is that so important? Not just for me and you, but for our athletes too. Oh, you know what? There's a lot of different things. Let's start. We'll start with flexibility and then we'll go to balance. So okay. flexibility is important just because, you know, a lot of these people, they're doing very explosive movements. So if you're, if you're on the track team and you're, you know, the gun shoots and you take off, if you don't have that flexibility and that movement in your, in your joints and in your muscles well, it's going to slow you down and it's going to make it so you're more likely to be injured, right? So that flexibility plays a big component in preventing injury. You need to be able to move your joints properly through their full range of motion to be able to, you know, maximize the, your movements and minimize your injury. So I think the long and short of the, you know, the flexibility piece is if you have that flexibility, you're less likely to get injured and you're less likely to compensate. So if you don't have the movement in one, you know, and for example, in your ankles, you have to rely on your knees to, in your hips to provide that movement. So if you have the flexibility the full way through, each of your joints can act appropriately how they're supposed to. And in that combination, the whole, you know, the whole set of them together can perform the way it's supposed to without you getting injured and without you having to compensate. So I think that's the biggest thing with flexibility. Boy, balance is, balance is a big one. Mm -hmm. the, I think the biggest thing about balance is, you know, we all, we all get older and balance gets harder as you get older and your fall risk increases. And again, with you know, the same as flexibility, decreasing chances of falls. If, you know, if your balance isn't that great and you lose your balance going upstairs or you lose your balance while you're moving and you fall down, your chances of injuring yourself are high. Um, and you, again, if you're doing your event, let's say you're power lifting and you're trying to, you know, squat a hundred pounds or something like that. If you don't have proper balance, that weight is going to wiggle and it's going to shift. And you're not going to be able to appropriately do the movement and that can, that can hurt yourself. That can make it so you can't move the weight you need to. I think balance is probably one of the biggest thing people need to work on because I don't want you to fall. I don't want you to, you know, hurt your body trying to do a movement when you don't have that stability and you don't have that balance to be able to do it. So well, I think can, those are the can you give us some examples of some balance exercises that people should, that they can do at home to work sure. on? Sure. Sure. A really, really easy one everybody can do. If you go to a kitchen counter, raise your heels up. So go up onto your toes and slowly lower back down. Try and shift your weight forward and back. If that seems easy to you, standing on one leg. Keep yourself by that counter and try and stand on just one leg and balance. See how long you can let go of the counter. You'll wiggle a little, put your hands back down. Try it again, readjust. If that seems easy, you can try and close your eyes while you're standing on one leg that one's pretty tricky so i would get really good see if you can balance for 30 seconds with your eyes open before you even start with your eyes closed 
Another thing you can do is, you know, when you walk, you put one foot in front of the other. If you can stand and put one foot right in front of the other and try and balance like you're on a trapeze or a balance beam, that's a really good one. But I want you to buy a counter for all of those things. <laughs> I don't want you to take a tumble. We're talking about balance here and not falling. So, Could you give us some examples of uh, stretching uh, or some, some stretches that uh, people can do at home to help with their flexibility? So I think the, the most common thing I find for the healthy athletes that are tight are your shoulders and your hamstrings and your, um, your calves, so the back side of your legs. So the first thing you can do, we'll talk about shoulders first. The first thing you can do is you can lay on, on your back and just kind of do snow angels up and down, hmm. okay, getting that shoulder motion. And if you can crisscross, you know, come back, crisscross again. The other one is bringing your hand behind your back and seeing how low you can touch your hand, okay? Trying to get it as far down on your back as you can. Same thing on your other side. Okay. That's a really good one. You can bring it across your shoulder this way. That's a really good one. How long should they hold that if they're coming across? How long About 30 seconds if you can. Okay. Yeah. So the other one, if this seems too easy for you, you can put your other hand behind your back the other way. You're trying to touch your fingers together. So yeah. let me move this and I can show you really quick. All right. Hold on. <laughs> so put one hand behind my back, one hand like this. Try to touch your fingers together back here. See how that works? And you can try both sides. Okay. Trying to get it. So those are the ones I'd say for your shoulder. Here, let me get down here and I'll show you a few for your, your legs. So you'll have to forgive my space. Let's see what we got. <laughs> if you can sit straight like this, just easy touching your toes. That's such an easy one, but it goes such a long way. If that one seems hard, you can bring one of your legs in and try and touch your toe this way. Okay. And if they can't touch their toes, just reach as far as they can go. As far as you can. Yep, exactly right. Yep. And the one, I, we give all our athletes this, so they better be doing this. <laughs> but if you're standing up, let me make sure. We'll see if we can. I want you to stagger your stance and try and get this back leg down, your heel on the floor, and lean forward a little bit. That'll really stretch out this backside when you switch sides. That seem fair? Yeah, it seems like uh, they're all easy exercises to do at home. So easy, and you, I mean, you don't need any equipment. You don't need anything extra. You can just do them. You can do them in your pajamas if you want to. Yeah, uh, you know, one of you know, one of that's one of the that was another question, but I think you just showed it. Well, you know, what are quick stretches that you could do every day? But I yeah. think what you just showed. You can do every day and possibly do it during uh, commercial breaks because if you're watching TV. Yep, that's a perfect time to do them. Yeah. You got, you know, you got three minutes of commercial breaks. You got three minutes of stretching. So uh, one last question. Why, uh, to let the athletes know, why is it important to do a, a, a warm up and a cool down? Uh, during training and even probably during competition, you know, during oh, competition? Sure. Sure. So your muscles are really, really cool, you know, parts of your body, but they require blood. They require oxygen. So if I'm resting and I wake up, almost all of my oxygen and my blood are going to my brain, going to my heart, going to my lungs, those things to help me breathe. When I start to move, I need to transition more oxygen and more blood to my muscles so that they can perform the way that they're supposed to. So warming up, first of all, gets that blood flowing through your muscles so that they have almost the energy and the food they need because oxygen is pretty much food for your muscles. So if you warm up, you provide that oxygen or that food to your muscles and they get ready to rock and roll. It's like you trying to, you know, trying to go do your event if you haven't eaten in 24 hours, right? You've got to warm them back up. You've got to give, provide that nutrition to your muscles so that they can perform the way they're supposed to. So that's the important piece about warming up. Um, cooling down. So after you, let's take swimming, for example. If you go swim a 50-meter freestyle as fast as you can and as hard as you can, your heart rate's going to come up, right? You're going you're gonna to feel like you've worked really hard. You're going to feel tired. 
the reason for cooling down is to help regulate your body, get it back to a really naturally a resting state. So you don't have that really quick transition from, oh my gosh, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going to stopping. You kind of ease your way back down. So it's really healthy for your heart and again, healthy for your muscles to relax, to stretch out in a, in a modified and a controlled way rather than going quickly from, you know, this explosive movement to stopping. Mm. So I think the warm up and cool down is important to keep you healthy. That's, I mean, that's the, the long and short of it to make sure you can continue to do your events well. And in, in, in the warm ups, uh, you know, the stretching and all that mm -hmm. stuff, um, if they're doing, you know, physical events, uh, I mean, I think all of our events are physical, but some require more physicality than the other. Yeah. Um, do warm up, should warm ups include uh, like, ru like more running than stretching? Like, is there a balance so, on that? Actually, there is a lot of research that shows that dynamic stretching is the best way to go. So not just the stretches I just showed you are good for, you know, every day. But if you're stretching before your event, you want to make it a movement-based stretch. So like you said, kind of walking, running. If you can, you know, do some air squats and walk a few Walk a few steps and then reach down and touch your toes. Walk a few more steps, then reach down and touch your toes. It's that movement. It's the movement with the stretching that makes the best warm up. Oh uh, yeah. So if they're just standing around, if they're just standing in one place and stretching, like yeah, you you're stretching muscles, but you're not getting them warmed up. You're not warming. Yep. You're not providing that nutrients to the muscles the way they need it. So you got to get moving a little bit with your stretches. So would you say that the cool down then would require, would be more of a stand in one place kind of? Uh, so it's stretching? a transition. So if you, you know, let's say you, you finish your 50 meter swim, then you go over to the cool down lap, swim a couple of laps so that you can bring your heart rate down a little bit. So you do have that movement component and then you can do that more standing stretching to kind of, you know, limber yourself up but it, it does take a little bit of movement to cool down as well too you can't just stop and stretch you still have to kind of you know move your body a little bit and keep your muscles active so your heart rate can come down in a more natural way what has been your most favorite memory of all of that that stands out to you the most oh boy mm -hmm. you know last year's reno summer games were incredible they were incredible. We had so many athletes that came through. We were busy the whole time. We had, you know, we had people taking the initiative to come through our booth twice if they had the time because they wanted to, you know, learn more stretches and they wanted to see how many push-ups they could do and things like that. I just, I think I love the Reno games because every single athlete was thrilled to be there they were ready to show off all of the hard work that they put in and they you know they have all of them have accomplished so much so it's an amazing opportunity for them to sort of showcase their talents so I think the Reno games last May or June whenever they were were you know they were just kind of the culmination of why I wanted to do this in the first place those athletes are amazing we appreciate having you on uh on our on our team for a healthy I'm athlete. happy to be here. I'm thrilled to be here. It's really, I appreciate so, you having me. All right. Well, thank you very much. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. That sounds good. I'll all see right. you later.